<laughs> this has certainly been one of the weirdest weeks of my life. Now I want to address the elephant in the room. I took my videos down. I wasn't forced to take my videos down. I wasn't pressured into taking my videos down. I chose to take my videos down. Why you might ask as you raise your pitchfork? Because I'm not a bad customer. I would hope that given a certain situation where I was asked to make things right, I could either ignore it and just piss the customer off more and more and more and let them rant and rave on the internet, or I could be an adult, mature and professional and respond to that issue hoping that the customer would take their complaint down once the issue was resolved. That's exactly what happened here. Uh, I'll name them, UPS could have either ignored the issue and just let me agitate, or they could have been professional, got in contact with me, and done everything in their power to make it right. And that's what they did. So me leaving the videos up would do only one thing, make me money. It would just generate me money and it generate me buzz and all that. And I'm not a greedy person. I'm not a person who wants to make it about me. I want to make it about my car. The whole, my whole video series is about my cars, and that's what I intend to do. On a side note, the Fast and Furious videos will continue going. Granted, they won't have a certain shipping and logistics company involved in them because that plot has now been resolved. But the, the adventure, the whole concept of me building a new motor and racing my brother, that's all part of the story and that will continue on. So in the spirit of moving forward, I want to talk about a couple things. I want to talk about what you're going to see over the next couple months. Well, as many of you have known, I've started doing a Thursday video scheduled release, and it's been very successful. It's actually made me step my game up. And as a result, take YouTube as my uh, focus, as, my, as the center of what I like doing. This is, this is my passion. So you're going to see one video a week, like you have been for the last month and a half, and if not two, because this build series is something I'm going to be filming. Now, if you're a big rotary enthusiast or even kind of just an engine building enthusiast, those videos are going to be for you. The, the concept of taking a motor that's in pieces, excuse me, engine, for those guys that say motor's electric, tell General Motors that, but from taking pieces and turning that into a living, breathing machine, that's what I want to, uh, to film. That's what I want to show you what happens. I could have gone to PPRE, which many of you are familiar with from Mad Mike's videos. I could have gone to them, dropped about $60,000, and bought the motor, the turbo, the well, most of the, not the drivetrain, but most of the engine bay all in one, and then for the most part, drop that in. Why? Like that, the whole point of what I want to show is that this is built, not bought. Now, granted, you have to buy these pieces, they're not cheap, but I'm putting it together in front of you. Partially because people are upset that I bought that three rotor and bought it and then tore it down to the frame and rebuilt it. And that, of course, suggests that I don't know what I'm doing. Sure, that's cool, whatever. But this one doesn't exist. I'm bringing it to life. So that's what this video series is going to be about. I'm going to be making a video about what it's like owning a two-rotor RX-7 because I've never made a video about the car I've owned the longest. That seems completely foolish, but that's what I've done. And I want to share with you what that car is like before she goes under the knife and gets this motor. Additionally, I'm going to be showing you a lot about why I chose a four rotor, especially over an LS, because that would be just too 